Effective chest compressions are the most important component of cardiopulmonary resuscitation. High-quality CPR involves rescuers being aware of how to deliver effective chest compressions to a victim in order to improve the chances of a successful defibrillation. Hands-only CPR is now being taught to laypeople as it is recognized that rescue breaths are not as important in the initial few minutes after a cardiac arrest. In addition, performing rescue breaths may put off bystanders from intervening and beginning vital CPR. Five components of high-quality CPR. In 2020, the American Heart Association and the European Resuscitation Council updated their guidelines to outline the five crucial components of high-quality CPR. These components are high chest compression fraction greater than 80%. It's the proportion of time a first aider spends performing chest compressions during CPR. Chest compression rate between 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Chest compression depth between 2 to 2.4 inches for adults and adolescents, 2 inches for prepubescent children, and 1.5 inches 4 centimeters for infants. Avoid leaning on the chest in between compressions. It allows for full chest recoil. Avoid excessive ventilation. Maintain two breaths for every 30 compressions. Performing high-quality chest compressions. Kneel by the side of the victim. Place the heel of one hand in the center of the victim's chest. Place the heel of your other hand on top of the first hand. Interlock the fingers of your hands and ensure that pressure is not applied to the victim's ribs. Do not apply any pressure over the upper abdomen or the bottom end of the sternum. Position yourself vertically above the victim's chest and, with your arm straight, press down on the sternum approximately 5 to 6 tm. Repeat at a rate of 100 to 120 chest compressions per minute. Each compression and release should take an equal amount of time. Common CPR mistakes. Effective CPR is a skill that requires practice. Common mistakes that occur when delivering chest compressions include 1. Too shallow chest compressions. Many people underestimate the force it takes to administer the correct compression depth of 2 to 2.4 inches on an adult victim's chest. They are afraid of harming the victim and potentially breaking their ribs. However, shallow chest compression will not effectively pump blood to a victim's dying organs. In this life-or-death situation, broken ribs are a small price to pay for a life saved. 2. Too slow chest compressions. By pausing between compressions or delivering compressions at too slow a rate, the victim's organs will become starved of oxygen and die. Administering 100 to 120 compressions per minute is much faster than many think, a little less than two every second. Three, not fully releasing the victim's chest. When performing high quality CPR, the victim's chest must be allowed to recoil and expand between each compression fully. This recoiling action pulls life-saving blood back into the heart. Four, excessive ventilation when giving rescue breaths. In recent years, the guidelines around rescue breaths during CPR have changed. Now, much more emphasis is put on chest compressions. Non-trained individuals should focus on compression-only CPR, and trained first aiders should stick to the 30 to 2 compression to breast rule. 5. Bouncing on the chest. It occurs when the rescuer's hands don't remain in contact with the victim's chest. Keep your hands interlocked and in the center of the chest wall while avoiding leaning onto the victim. 6. Bending the arms. If arms are bent during chest compressions, the muscles must work much harder to administer the same force, and the first aider is likely to tire quickly. Straight arms help to drive body weight downwards with enough power to reach the proper compression depth with the least energy expelled. 7. Rescuer fatigue. Administering high-quality CPR at the proper compression rate and depth is tiring, even for the fittest of people. A tired first aider will likely lean on the victim's chest and fail to compress the chest to the required amount. As a result, the victim's chances of survival are lower. 8. Stopping to check for a pulse. Checking for a pulse may seem important, but any interruption to chest compressions could have fatal consequences. Many health bodies now recommend that non-medics avoid pulse checks entirely. 
even before CPR has commenced. It's because even trained first aiders can struggle to find a pulse, and this hesitation can waste valuable life-saving time. Conclusion Poor quality CPR and high quality CPR can be the difference between life and death. So, learning the correct way to administer this life-saving procedure is one of the essential elements of first aiders training. If you are learning CPR, why not test your skills and knowledge with our free CPR quiz and see how you score.